Are we looking at the bright new face of the nation's thriving capital? Or could this be the uncle of all carbuncles? We've taken data of more than 250 new high-rises, either under construction or awaiting approval, to reveal how some of London's best-known and most expensive views could change. If you're going to change the skyline of a city, it's important to consider what the buildings are for. It isn't enough simply to have the maximum construction activity. They're not making land anymore. It's a scarce resource. London doesn't have enough land to provide the homes people need. So it would be fine if you were building office towers that people are going to be working in that boost the economy. I take great exception to them building piles of safety deposit boxes simply for rich Russians and Chinese to stash their cash. On a clear day, on that clear day, you can see... You know, up here on the cable car today, it's positively alpine. The air is fresh and limpid. You can almost smell the Edelweiss. But what about the visual environment? How will it look around here on these old industrial wharves and units in a few years' time if the go-ahead's given for all the planned skyscrapers that developers want to build? Greenwich is practically the home of time, and time is money to developers keen on a slice of this historic vista. Barbara Weiss, an architect herself, is part of a resistance movement. Much as people think that these towers deliver housing and contribute to making the housing shortage uh, less severe, in actual fact, they are only flats for the incredibly wealthy 1%. And your average Londoner will never be um, in a position to be able to afford to buy or rent in them. So uh, we are sacrificing our skyline and some of our best monuments and views, um, views from parks, views from conservation areas, for a result that really doesn't benefit London as a whole. No, it's not Newsnight's range of intimate gifts for Valentine's Day, but an ID parade of London's tallest towers. They have their admirers. Well-designed tower blocks are wonderful. I love them. I, I love the Shard. I love the uh, Gherkin or 30 St. Mary Axe. And I think the Leadenhall building or the Cheese Grater is one of my favourite buildings at the moment. And I've just come back from New York where there are some spectacular tall buildings which really enhance the skyline uh, rather than damage it. I think we have to look at the quality of the architecture. We have to look at the location and also how they hit the ground is really important. The new blocks going up in London right now light up the path of the Thames, spelling out a welcome to foreign investment, for better or worse. This may be the first unburstable housing bubble we've experienced in the UK. Think of it this way, if you live in Russia and you're a rich oligarch, you could wake up tomorrow morning, find you're imprisoned and you've had everything confiscated. In Hong Kong, you could wake up to find Beijing is renationalized. In those circumstances, to even have half of your capital secure in property in London or New York is actually a good deal. The more expensive, the better the investment opportunity, the more like gold bricks it becomes. Hence these flats that people are leaving empty or simply buying as a, an investment for buy to let. This is simply a, a commodity and no longer linked with supply and demand. On a clear day, you can see the work on London's high-rises going like gangbusters. But as to exactly what it all means and where it might end, most of us gaze through a bubble darkly 